I'm Dave. And I'm Wally. We're getting ready to do some test welds. Right. How many times have we preach this should be done? Every time. Every I mean, time we're with somebody. There's no excuse for that. Not right not to do this. It doesn't matter if you're welding 45 mil TPO, 60 mil TPO, 80 mil PVC, 80 mil XK. You're going to follow these same steps. Right. Absolutely. Test welds need to be done. That should be non-negotiable in any book. What we're going to do right now is do test welds on 80 mil, correct? 80 mil PVC. Right. Doing this solves so many little bitty problems before they become big issues. Yeah, I mean, if your seams go bad, what do you, what do you have? And how long, does it, how long does it take you to do this at the beginning of every day? Five minutes, if that. Yeah, maybe 10 minutes yeah. at, at the most. Yeah. Now, when you're doing test welds, you want to use scrap material, right? No, you don't. You want to use that day's material. So, not stuff you pulled out of the dumpster? Oh, no, the job. no, 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 no. If we're on a job, I got roll lane right here. Right. I'm going to take a couple feet off that membrane mm -hmm. and, and do the test welds. Right. Now, let me ask you another question. When should these be done? Well, before you start welding, obviously. Okay. If you start welding in the morning, so you're on a big job, you start welding in the morning, do it then. You go to lunch, you come back, you do it again. So what you about get a big temperature change. Spring and fall. Yeah, yeah. You might do this two, three times a day. Oh, yeah. So, if guys take lunch, What's the first thing, after you guys take lunch or go to their truck around the roof, what's the first thing they should do before they go back to work that what day? What they should do is put gas in the generator. The gener generator's running all these, right? So speaking of generators, equipment is very important for this. Yes. We tell you in our specifications, I believe the manufacturers that make these will tell you what, what size generator should a contractor have. 10,000. Minimum, right? Now, can I run a robot and handguns and screw guns off that same generator? No, Ed, the generator 10,000 should be dedicated just, just to the to welder, yeah. yes. Because that's gonna affect how this runs. It'll also affect the longevity of that machine, correct? What other things do we need to consider when we're doing test welds? Well, you, you consider the three things, the weight, the heat, and the speed. Right, so we're welding 80 mil PVC. The weld window is gonna be different compared to 80 mil PVC versus 50 mil PVC. Yes. Or TPO, correct? Oh, yes. TPO, you're going to have a wide range. PVC, you're going to have a range not quite as big. Right. But you're still going to have a weld window. So let me ask you a question. I'm a contractor. How do I, what do I do? How do I set this up? First thing is you have the proper equipment. Right. You got to have a good welder. All of your equipment has to be up to date. Your cord has to be good. Generator, yada, yada, yada. For this, for PVC, I would go with the full weight pack first. Okay. Well, you said something a minute ago. There's three things to a good weld. Speed, heat, and pressure, right? right? There's also airflow. This is true. So we got 100% airflow. We always target most of the time, again, to ambient temperature. Right. If it's colder, you may want to mess with that, but that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing, yeah. yeah. So we have all the weights. Right. We have an internal weight, two exterior weights, and we have speed and heat. Right. If you try and adjust both loads, yeah. you'll drive yourself up a wall. Mm -hmm. One has to be a constant. Right. So I don't know. I was taught this formula years ago. I don't know if you agree or not. Whatever the ambient temperature is, if it's 85, mm -hmm. go to 80 or go to 90, round it up or round it down. Divide that ambient temperature by 10. It's mm. 80, it'd be 8, add eight. 2, 10. Right. 10 feet a minute. So now, now you don't have to stay there. It no. gives you an idea where to start. Yes. Correct? Right. So now we have, we know we're going to do 10 feet a minute. Now we have our, our heat. Mm -hmm. You have to find the bottom of that weld window, correct? Correct. And you have to find the top. Right. And ideally, you want to set this machine up in the middle. Makes so sense. here we're going to start, let's say 700 degrees, mm -hmm. from 700 all the way up to 1148, which is machine max, at 100 degrees at a time. Right. But we're not going to touch the speed. No, no. Right. One thing at a time. When we're all done, we're going to go back and do the polls. I'm going to show everybody what to look for where the weld window is. Perfect. All right. So let's, let's get started. Fire this up. Again, we're going to go at 700 degrees. Yeah. We're going to turn this on. And you'll see the temperature start to climb. So something, guys, Dave, all you should be aware of what's going on right here. That is the air dam to keep the air in the sea. Right. So if that's not engaged on these pulleys and you weld up God knows how many squares. Right. So I think you're going to have some serious problems. Right. So remember, we're dragging this thing all across the roof. Yep. You got to make sure this thing's engaged. Is it engaged up here? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So now, how much do we want to lap these? Do we want to lap them like a seam, or do we want just want to lap maybe about an inch or so? About an inch or so from the edge, because remember, you're going to field pull. Do we want to pull with the seam? What's the correct way to test this? You want to go cross machine. So you want to go this way. So This one is inch, machine direction. Right? This is cross. So one inch across the seam. Yep. That's the proper way to do it. Yes, test. just like the Instrom machine, just like the ASTM. So ladies up here, lap them about an inch. Let you me help actually you. help? Yeah. Oh my God, you okay? Well, you know, it's... Oh, let's wrap the temperature. Ah. We've got our speed set. 
We got our, our air dam belts engaged, so we're good to go. Never reach on the side of the gun to lift a membrane. Yep. Always to filter burnt. your sample. Set that, let it cool. We're going to bump up to 800 degrees. Right. Now, PVC. And when you're welding PVC versus TPO, you're going to get a buildup of, what do you want to call this? Char. It'd be char like soot built up on this. If I'm welding a 100 foot seam, odds are I'm going to have to clean this every seam. And your handgun is the same way when you're doing hand welding. Yes, sir. This is not too dirty right now. You're always going to have a wire brush with you. And always make sure your nozzle is not pinched closed. All these holes are here for a reason. Correct. Make sure they're not plugged up. Ready? Yep. You notice I got the light in? I did. So again, 10 feet a minute is a good, comfortable speed. I mean, 10 feet a minute, I got to go 100 feet. How long is it going to take me to do that scene? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. If I'm trying to push the envelope and go, say, 14, 16 feet, am I really gaining that much? No, you're not. Yeah. And by trying to save a little time, that, that little bit of trying to go, it's not just worth cost it. me twice as much. And now I got to strip everything in. Yeah. Plus, you got to drag this cord. You've got a 100 foot. Eight, 10 gauge cord you got you got other guys on the roof right other cord equipment you got to keep this straight sometimes speed kills this is 800 degrees see the smoke it's starting to get bleed out we're on what now 900 yeah 900 yes sir now let me ask you another question let's say we're on the roof today let's say my i come up with 900 degrees from my middle of my weld window okay do i need to do test tomorrow Oh, absolutely. And you need to do tests today. Even, if even, even if it's the same weather? You may not need to do the full battery of tests, but you'll have an idea where to start. Right. Because tomorrow's probably going to be somewhat like today. Start there and go up and go down 100 degrees. So if you're at 900, I would start maybe at 800, 900, and 1,000. And then the other reason is maybe there's something going on with the machine. Oh, the cord. Or the generator or the cord. You don't want to take five minutes out of that day to do it. Exactly. All right, 900. Get a little better. We're gonna mm -hmm. bleed out. A little bit more smoke. See my nozzle? You gotta be careful because you're just blowing stuff out of there. You don't wanna stand in front of this when you're cleaning it. Can you overheat PVC? Yes, absolutely. What is this telltale sign of overheating PVC? First it'll be black, then it'll be yellow. Yellowish color? Yeah. Every time I get to what around a thousand degrees till we max this out. I just kind of take my probe or my fingers, my hands, I'm gonna, as that robot comes across here, I'm gonna kind of really, really gently drag my probe, not probing it, or take my fingers and see if I can peel that lap apart. From now till we max it out. Okay. okay. We got really good bleed out, really good smoke. Can we get all the crud on there? See it coming out there now? Yep. On the side of that, you don't do this. You can run the risk of getting that in your seam and you can have a void. Okay, we're at 1100. Really good smoke now. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, oh, I think we're overheated, Dave. All I was doing is dragging my probe until I felt a hitch. Should we go to 1148? If we have a cut, we might as well. All right. Look at the crud on here now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, we're at max temperature. See the gray? or the yellowish. That's a perfect indication where we're starting to overheat that membrane. Now, could we go faster, Dave? Yes, we could. At 1148? Yes. And now you're kind of limited. Mm -hmm. Only thing you've got left to play with is your speed. speed. When you do it this way, you've got, you can play with your speed and your heat. Again, we're at max temperature. Only thing I got left is the, the speed. speed. Yep. All right, Dave, so we've got all our welds done. Yes. And we've got all our cuts. Now, there's three in each one of these samples. Right. So you really should always do at least three cuts. Oh, yeah. Because every once in a while, you will get a funky pull. Now, I think you had mentioned this earlier before. These are one inch across the seam. Yes. How many times have you seen guys walk up and do a TPO or PVC, grab this and pull this way? A lot of times I have. Is that the correct way? That is absolutely not the correct Explain way. Explain again why this is not the correct way versus this. Once you get the, the bond to break or to peel, what you're going to do is you're going to telegraph that whole thing and it's going to be perfect. Whatever it broke at is going to be the same width all the way down. So you can actually get a false positive. Oh, yes. I've seen this on, you know, in TPO especially, like 500 degrees maybe. You pull it and you'll get a perfect. You do this way, you'll get nothing. No. We didn't pull this out of thin air. Nope. This is an industry-wide standard test. Right. Okay. All right. So we went 700 all the way up to 1148. You're going to pull these, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
PVC is a lot more difficult to pull than TPO. Yes. All right, now again, when you're pulling these, you're not doing this, right? No, don't snap it. Do as controlled peel as you can. Because when they put this in, what, what's the machine called? Instraw machine. It does a mechanical pull, right? It right. does like some pull like a machine would do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really a machine anymore, but I'll give it my best shot. Well. Huh, is that a good weld? No, it's not. That's not good. No, we, okay. we have no scrim. So seven's no good. So obviously we don't want this on a roof. 800. Right. That's not good. Nope. Let's just pull one more. So, no good at 800. No. 900. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a film tearing bond and then you can go up from there. So, an inch, inch and a quarter maybe? I don't think we're quite an inch and a half. No, I don't think What's we're What's the minimum inch. we're looking for, an inch? Inch to inch and a half, yeah. Inch, inch and a half. So we're inch. like an inch and a quarter. Oh, good eye. So we found the bottom. Now we got to find the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a thousand. Beautiful well. Yep. Thousand. There's 1100. Mm -hmm. Now 1100, we were on the borderline of being was, too warm. Yep. A little excess of bleed out in just right. a little bit. 1100. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Right at an inch and a half. Max temperature, 1148 degrees. Now, you cut these a little wide. <laughs> we'll try and see if I can do this one. Whoa. Yeah. That's got to be almost two inches, doesn't it? This looks like a good weld. Mm -hmm. In reality, the browning, the charring. Mm -hmm. Now, yellowing, you're right at the edge of the top of your window. So, is this a good weld or is it? What do you think? <laughs> you have a film tearing uh bond there right so everybody would say well that's a great well man you got two inches good for you yeah nope you're so overheated what can happen is don't do a mechanically attached system especially if this is my bottom sheet i'm gonna have a screw and plate right here right i'm gonna weld over top of it yes well over time that system's doing this and it's constantly pulling on that weld it could take six months could take two years it could take five years eventually if you overstress that weld, this is where seams are going to start to fail and you're going to start finding voids out in the middle of, of nowhere. nowhere yeah all right so where was the bomber window 900 nine where's the top of our window 1100 11. so we got about 200 degree weld window right mm -hmm. so where would you set this machine up ideally at 10. yeah a thousand degrees yeah right so again test welds every time you there's run the no robot. there's no reason why these should not be done nope hi i'm wally and i'm dave you may have heard there's a lot of 80 mil pvc being inspected in the industry yes today, there correct? is if you've never done 80 mil, there's some things you need to consider. Right. Which we will cover in our other videos. Go check it out at gaf.com slash roofing it right.